I don't think Jackson Brown ever saw the Eagles as his equals, you know. J.D. Salver uh, could have joined the band and didn't, you know. Um, these are very special talents, very individualistic. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe um, they tolerated the Eagles, uh, but I think they saw them sort of a bit as the commercial end of things. And I, and I can't emphasize enough how that was such a dirty word, you know, back in the early seventies. Um, and uh, so I, don't, I personally don't feel, I mean, they certainly didn't get it from the media. You know, there was nobody they had to wait for Cameron Crowe to come along in the mid seventies who's writing about Led Zeppelin, who Rolling Stone also don't like, you know, who's writing about the Eagles, who's writing about people that, you know, Grail Marcus and all these people just not even worth my time. You know, that was really, honestly, I think the attitude of the moment. And the Eagles, like all musicians, um, that take themselves seriously, particularly back then where... <laughs> Albums really were very, very uh, big news. It was a monoculture. We would all know what we were talking about. Um, I think, you know, these guys read the music press. They take it very seriously. And uh, every small slight is like a thousand cuts. Um, and the Eagles really did suffer in that regard. I mean, they had a terrible relationship with the press. And I still think Henley to this day displays that kind of fuck you, who needs you? You know, he's not, he's not, I, I may be wrong, but I think Cameron really was probably the only one that ever, um, they ever really connected with or, or, or let their guard down enough mm. to think, okay, he's all right. He's, he's not going to fuck with us. He's, he's okay. He's a good kid. He's a kid, you know, um zeppelin were the same way he's a kid he's okay he can hang around but not bloody lester bangs or or um dave marsh or god forbid you know the serious guys so um so i this is just my take but my take is that no they i don't think they were seen uh on that elite level that graham parsons was gene clark crosby stills nash and young um do you, do you think they were too earnest? I, I kind of related a little bit to that. Well, we're, both Holly and I are big U2 fans, but we think like maybe they were like U2 is an earnest band. They're going to, they're, you know, and they were driven much like the Eagles were at the time. Do you think that was a, a reason that the Eagles might have been hated is that they, they really wanted success? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, Glenn wanted to play Chuck Berry songs and, and be a rock star and have a shit ton of money and a swimming pool in which to drive a big white Rolls Royce, you know. I mean, who doesn't want that when you're 20 years old and strumming a guitar in L.A., you know. Um, Don, I think, was a little more serious about his music, but uh, it quickly became it quickly became about them fulfilling dreams that they felt they weren't allowed to have or or weren't legitimately respectably credibly uh allowed to have but they always had them they were super driven you can't you know john lennon once said of the beatles you know you have to be a bastard to make it in this business and the beatles were the biggest bastards of all um Anybody that's worked with the Stones and Mick Jagger will know he cracks the whip. Um, so, yeah, you do need that. And, and I think also, you know, I mean, you too, it's interesting you mentioned them. They're fairly roundly despised here in the UK by a lot of the media um, because of their success. You know, it's like, oh, no, not Bono again. Oh, fuck off. I'm sick of him, you know. Um I don't think that was quite the same with the Eagles because they weren't around anywhere near as long as you two in terms of making music and stuff. Um, but I think for sure they, they were outsiders. I think they always felt like outsiders. 
you know, if you look at that famous footage, um, oh, it's in the book, and I can't remember where it was now, but there's a party before they've even recorded, and they've only got that one song, uh, um, Witchy Woman. Ooh, Witchy it? Woman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the only song they have, so they're playing it over and over and <laughs> over. And here's Joni Mitchell dancing, and over there are some other cool people, and these L.A. scenesters, you know, they're like, they're the guys providing, they're like waiters, you know, they're like, they're the head. <laughs> Um, and I, I, yeah, for sure. I think that's, that's kind of in those people's minds. That's who they were. You know, they weren't Jim Morrison, you know, they weren't Jimi Hendrix. They weren't Arthur Lee. They weren't David Crosby. You know, they weren't this kind of vital, no plan B. I'm bringing art and my heart and my blood and I will die for you. There was none of that, you know, uh, quite rightly. I mean, I think they were, ahead of their time in some ways, you know?